part two, whoever you decide to take part two with, one thing I want you to remember, your skin is your first line of defense. All right? So, for anything to begin to make us sick, we have to, well, you know, viruses and uh, bacteria and that sort of thing, it has to get past this first line of defense. So as we begin to look, wait a minute, are we doing the integumentary system or are we doing mm -hmm. tissues? We're doing tissues. I showed y'all the video one chapter too quick. That's all right. We'll remember it. Sorry about that. My mistake. Okay, so <laughs> tissues. I was going on about the integument. Y'all just sitting there. Y'all just <laughs> Okay, so sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so I guess I got to back up a second then, gather my thoughts, and kind of backtrack for a second. All right, so 1, 2, 4, 26 for the chapters that we've completed. And one of the things that we've done is we have talked about the hierarchy that exists. And we started at the very bottom, which is going to be like um, at the element level. We worked our way up to the cells. Cells make up tissues. Tissues are going to make up the organs. So I was just a little bit ahead of myself. I think I was excited to get into the integumentary system. But no, we got to go through tissues now. Okay, so tissues. When we begin to look at the tissues that are going to make up our body, at this point in time, for the majority of us, we have this idea that a cell is like this circular, got the nucleus, that it is this shape. Not so. Okay? We're going to find that the cells that make up our body are going to have a lot of different structures that are going to be present. We're going to kind of begin to think outside the box. One of the things that we're going to see with the cells of our body. The cells, now granted, some of the cells, this matrix that will be existing outside the cell, all right, what we term extracellular fluid, all right, we're going to see it making up what's, what's termed a matrix. What do y'all think of when you hear that term? The movie. How many of y'all in here saw the movie The Matrix? All right. And you know how in the movie there were the, the stuff looked like it moved through this like gel-like substance? Okay. It would kind of slow down and all that sort of stuff. We're going to find a very similar situation for ourselves. The matrix is going to be very important to how the cells function. They're, it's going to be very important to the maintenance of that cell. When we begin to talk about the cells of the body, we are going to have four classes of cells. We can classify them as epithelial, connective, muscle, or nervous. Wait a minute. How many cells do we have in the body? Trillions. That means those trillions of cells that we have, they're going to fall into one of these four classes. All right? When we study the tissues, when we study at this level, it's called histology. It's a huge area of science. Why? Because so many things occur at the cellular level. We can study it by doing a biopsy 
Anybody in here ever had a biopsy done? Okay. This is where they actually go in. They remove some of the tissue of interest. They look at it and study it, put it through tests, that sort of thing, and try to determine what might be wrong. We also do a lot of studying about the uh, human body by doing an autopsy. Pretty sure you've all probably heard of one of these. Some of you may have even seen one, okay? But what we do is examine that body, and because we are, one of the things that you should be geared towards learning is the norm, all right? So you'll learn what is normal. So therefore, when you see something that doesn't fall into that category, you'll know it was abnormal. So therefore, you've got a pathology. And you can determine that a lot of times at death. When we talk about the development of the tissues, when egg and sperm meet and fertilization occurs, when that begins to take place, we have the one cell, which is the egg, it will begin to go through the stages. One becomes two, two becomes four, four becomes eight. And once we get to a certain number in the development after fertilization occurs, we're going to begin to form what's called germ layers. Now, when you first hear the term germ, what do you think about? Think of something bad. Think of something bad. Is there anything else that can come to mind when you hear the term germ? Germination. Germination. All right. To give rise to. So, when fertilization occurs, and one, one cell becomes two, two to four, four to eight, that sort of thing, we are going to form these germinating layers. They're called endoderm, mesoderm, ectoderm. Endo means to the what? To what? To the inside. Meso means middle. Ecto means outside. So these three germ layers are going to give rise to the tissues of our body. The endoderm, the inner layer, begin to let it think about the inside of the body. Digestive areas, other, um, other organs with that. The middle layer, think of it as being muscle, bone, blood vessels outer layer, the skin, and then what they term the neuroectoderm, which is going to be part of the nervous system. So under these classes of tissues, the ones that are termed epithelial, this is where the cells, the matrix that, they, that the cells are surrounded by, there's not a lot of it. The cells tend to be closely packed, all right? They tend to be dense in nature. This type of tissue, the epithelial tissue, look at what it does. Covers body surfaces. Think about this, all right? This part of yourself, your, your body. And then forms glands. Well, hmm, glands. What do you think of when you hear that term? Sweat glands. Sweat glands. Oil glands. Ceruminous glands. All right. This is going to be parts of the body for anything reaching the outside 
environment. So epithelial tissue, we're making up the outside surface of the body. We're going to make up the lining. Let this now make you think about a membrane. All right. The lining of our digestive tract, our respiratory tract, our urogenital uh, systems, it's going to make up the heart and the blood vessels because of it being a part of linings that are going to be present. And then it's going to line the majority of our body cavities. Now here's some information that it's letting us know that these cells have. They're going to have a free surface, a basal surface, and a lateral surface. So what exactly is that telling me? So now, if I take that information and based on the terminology that I just showed, all right, basal, lateral, apical. With that terminology, it's going to tell me that these cells, all right, they're going to have to have a basal surface. Can you think of anything else that term might imply? Like a base. They're going to have a lateral surface. Lateral means to the outside, right? And what does apical mean? Anybody know what that might mean? The top. They're going to have an apical surface. Hmm. It's kind of interesting because I'm going to have a basement membrane. All right. I'm going to have to have specialized cell contacts. What? What does that mean? That means that on this base and the membrane, if I have another cell, these two cells have got to connect in some way. They're going to have to connect in some way to their basement membrane. Wait a minute. Connect on the basement side, connect on the lateral side. Why did I not show a side or a connection for the apical surface? Think about where the cells are found. If we are talking about the cells, for example, that are going to make up the skin, they have an exposed top surface to the outside world. Right? All right. So kind of getting you to think a little bit differently now about cells. All right, because trust me, it's going to be a lot of different stuff about the cells. These cells are going to be avascular. A means what? Without. What does vascular mean? Vessels. So this is telling me that these cells do not 
have blood 